So why measure soil moisture from space? The limitations in measuring soil moisture is that there are few ground stations around the world. And in addition, measurements at ground stations might not be representative of the surrounding landscape because they don't capture that heterogeneity. The advantage of measuring soil moisture from space is that uh, these measurements can be done not only on a continuous basis and at global scales, but also because they're done applying the same methodology. And that's what SMAP does. SMAP provides frequent revisit global maps of soil moisture. Now, SMAP uses a microwave sensor called a radiometer, which operates in the L-band range, specifically at 1.41 gigahertz. The radiometer measures what's called brightness temperature, which is in kelvins. And from brightness temperature, soil moisture is derived as a product. The SMAP mission also had a radar sensor. However, that sensor ceased to function three months into the science phase of the mission. The reason microwave is used is because it is sensitive to soil moisture and also because it can image the surface of the earth regardless of daylight conditions or most weather conditions. Now, the sensor uses an antenna that is six meters in diameter. As you can see in this illustration, um, you can see uh, the, the antenna. And this antenna, it actually rotates at about 14.6 revolutions per minute and creates a swath on the surface of the Earth that's a thousand kilometers wide. The orbit is a polar sun-synchronous orbit, and SMAP is at an altitude of 685 kilometers with a 6 a.m., 6 p.m. equatorial crossing. So that allows for a two to three day global re revisit because of uh, the swath to swath overlap. But in terms of an exact orbit revisit, it's an eight day exact orbit revisit. SMAP was launched into space on January 31st, 2015. Uh, it took a couple of months for the satellite to be commissioned. And as of early April, 2015, SMAP went to, into its science phase. So at that point, it started to continuously collect uh, data. So here I've listed the characteristics of SMAP soil moisture measurements. The domain is global. The spatial resolution is at 9 and 36 kilometers. The temporal repeat is every three days. So every three days you have a complete map of uh, global soil moisture. The sensing depth is approximately five centimeters. The measurement is volumetric soil moisture. That means that it's a measurement of the volume of water within a given volume of soil. And the accuracy is 0.04. Um, so that means that 0.04 volumetric. So that means that there's a, um, the error is up to 4% volumetric. And the data access policy is, the data is freely available. And I'll talk about where you can access the data at the end of this presentation. As mentioned, SMAP has a three-day temporal repeat, and this is important because it captures that surface wetting and drying. And capturing the impacts of storm, interstorm sequences combined with the inertia of surface storage requires a revisit of approximately three days. And this figure shows these wetting and drying periods. The black line is continuous soil moisture over a month. The blue inverted triangles are soil moisture sampled every seven days, and the red inverted triangles is soil moisture sampled every two and a half days. And you can see that the sampling every seven days misses those wetting and drying events, while sampling every two and a half days captures those events much better. So soil moisture varies with space and time, and there are several factors that influence the amount of water in the soil. The primary driver of soil moisture is rainfall. 
Soil texture also influences how long water is retained in the soil. So for example, sandy soils are more porous and, uh, than silty soils, and hence sandy soils tend to hold less water than silty soils. Vegetation plays a role in soil moisture retention. We all know that a bare surface will dry quicker than soil under vegetation. And then finally, topography influences where water tends to accumulate, and you would expect flat surfaces to accumulate more water and for longer than steep surfaces. Also in the northern hemisphere, soils in south-facing slopes will tend to dry out quicker than soils in north-facing slopes. The reason SMAP has active and passive in its name is because of the type of sensors it uses. A passive instrument, a radiometer, measures the emitted radiation from a medium, from the, the surface of the Earth in this case. And it's uh, the radiation that's emitted at 1.41 gigahertz. An active instrument like a radar is analogous to an ultrasound, so it, it provides its own illumination source and sends a wave and measures the reflection back from the target. As mentioned, the SMAP radar is no longer working and SMAP has relied on its radiometer to produce soil moisture products. However, SMAP is using radar data from the European Space Agency Sentinel-1 satellite, which has a radar sensor, and I'll talk about this uh, a bit further along. The use of L-band in the micro range has certain advantages, as mentioned earlier. First, it's not significantly attenuated by clouds and rain, as opposed to visible and infrared images where clouds often mask the surface of the Earth. Also, second, we can see the surface of the Earth and make measurements day and night. Other advantages is that microwaves are sensitive to the water in the soil due to the dielectric properties of the soil and these, change, these can change significantly between wet and dry soils. Uh, also, L-band has a long wavelength, so it has a wavelength of approximately 24 centimeters. That means the distance from the peak of one wave to the peak of the next wave is 24 centimeters. And the longer the wavelength, the more it penetrates through the vegetation and into the soil. And so that's why SMAP can measure up to, um, in general, the top five centimeters of the soil. Higher frequencies or shorter wavelengths would not penetrate as deeply into the soil. And therefore, the long wavelength at L-band is optimum for SMAP in terms of instrument design. So this is a basic overview of the measurement approach. The radiometer measures emissions and the radar measures backscatter from the land surface. So emissions that reach the radiometer come from the following components, the soil only, the vegetation only, and from the vegetation bouncing off the soil and back into the receiver. Now, interactions from the radar signal can come from the soil, the vegetation, and the vegetation soil or soil vegetation. The radar is more complex because the signal is transmitted and reflected, and hence these interactions with the vegetation can be complicated, and it's much more difficult to extract just the portion that pertains to soil moisture. So in order to measure soil moisture, you have to account for vegetation, you have to account for the surface roughness because that has an influence on the microwave signal, and you have to account for temperature, as well as a couple of other things, which I'll talk about in the next slide. So the, the SMAP soil moisture algorithm has a number of what's called ancillary data sources that inform the algorithm. So in order to tease out the soil moisture information from the signal, a large amount of information is needed about all the components contributing to the signal, such as vegetation, surface temperature, we talked about roughness. Um, and so to do this, we bring in other data sets called ancillary data sets that can be used in the retrieval and they provide information on different surface components. Um, so, for example, surface air meteorology uh, that, that contains information on um, air temperature, uh, precipitation, vegetation opacity, so how thick is your vegetation, what's the water content of the vegetation, surface topography, for that a digital elevation model is used, 
soil textures, land water boundaries. So we want to know where uh, there's water and where there's land. Obviously, where there's water, a mask is applied so that there are no retrievals over areas where there's just water. Also, areas where there's permanent ice and snow, there are no retrievals over those areas, as well as over large urban areas. So in addition to SMAP, there are other soil moisture satellite products, and one of them is SMOS, uh, which is from the European Space Agency. It has very similar characteristics to characteristics to SMAP. It's an L-band radiometer with 40 kilometer spatial resolution, a temporal resolution of three days, and a sensing depth of approximately five centimeters. The difference between their soil moisture product and SMAP is uh, that SMAP has a, a what's called a radio frequency interference filter implemented. And this filter mitigates for noise in the signal. And as a result, the SMAP soil moisture data tends to be um, more continuous, so you, you don't have um, as much noise, especially in some parts of the world, um, in the data, in the product. There's also ASCAT, which is a European Space Agency scatterometer. It operates at a different frequency, but it still operates in the microwave range, so it operates at C-band, and there are products at 12 and a half and 25 kilometers, and that's uh, daily observations. Yes.